Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is question number seven from January 2020 International A Level P3, um, an Edexcel paper. And this question here is about um, numerical methods. It says figure three shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals two cosine three x minus three x plus four and x is greater than zero where x is measured in radians. Very important to read the questions here very carefully because sometimes that will mess you up if you don't read it. Okay, it says the curve crosses the x-axis at the point P as shown. Um, and given that the x-coordinate of P is alpha, show that alpha lies between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. So basically, um, this has got the value x equals alpha. And they're, they're telling us that, so supposing this is 0 0.8, and this is 0 0.9. So the value of alpha lies somewhere between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Now, how can we prove this um, using um, this equation? How can we just prove it using it? We have to show that it lies between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Well, I know that y equals 2, y equals 2 times cosine 3x minus 3x plus 4. And I know that this hits the x-axis when y equals 0, because the x-axis is the, the line y equals 0. So when y equals 0, this is going to cross the x-axis. So I know that the roots, or the, the solution for alpha, x equals alpha, and x will equal the root alpha when 2 times cosine 3x minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. That's the equation I need to solve to find alpha. So let me call this equation f of x equals 2 cosine 3x minus 3x plus 4. Okay, and if I substitute x equals 0 0.8 into this equation, according to the way the graph looks here, that's going to give me a positive value for y. f of x will be positive. And if I put x equals 0 0.9 into this equation, it's going to give me a negative value for y. Okay, and that shows that somewhere between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, some point between those two points, it, co it crossed the x-axis because it was above the x-axis when x was 0 0.98 and it's below the x-axis when x is 0 0.9. So somewhere between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, there lies the root alpha. Okay, so that's the basic concept behind this. So what you must do here is you, first of all, you call the function f of x equals 2 cosine 3x minus 3x plus 4 and you substitute inside the function 0 0.8 and you also substitute inside the function 0 0.9 and you show that there's a change in sign but you've got to be careful here because x must be in radians and I'm sure if you don't put x in radians you won't get a change in sign and you're going to get confused so reading the question is really really important here okay so I'm going to use the calculator and do that Okay, so I'm going to put um, two cosines. So what I'll do is I'll write my steps here to make it clear. So I'll put two times the cosine of three times 0 0.8 minus three times 0 0.8 plus four equals. Okay, so if I show that step, then they know exactly what I'm doing. So two times the cosine of three times 0 0.8, 0 0.8 close bracket, minus 3 times 0 0.8, what's going on here, minus 3 times 0 0.8, I'll put in the bracket there, my point is not becoming a point, okay, um, plus 4, okay, that gives me a value 0 0.125, so 2 cosine, 3 times 0 0.8 minus 3 times 0 0.8 minus 3 times 0 0.8 plus 4. Yep, so that gives me 0 0.1252. That's 0 0.1252. 0 0.1252. And when I put 0 0.9 in here, okay, I have 2 times the cosine of 3 times 0 0.9 minus 3 times 0 0.9 plus 4. What do I get? Just replace this with 0 0.9. And I get negative 0 0.5081. Zero, negative 0 0.5081. Negative 0 0.5081. So I see I have a change in sign. 
as we as we uh, deduce from the diagram, 0 0.8 will give us a positive value of y, and 0 0.9 will give a negative value of y. So we can say, therefore, as f of x is a continuous function, this is a complete answer, it continues, I mean, it doesn't have any breaks and it's not got an asymptotes. As it's a continuous function, and there is a change of sign they're looking for this statement change of sign okay um, between f 0 0.8 and f 0 0.9 there must there must lie a root a root okay between x equals 0 0.8 and x equals 0 0.9 therefore alpha is between them so that's fine there must lie a root and we'll call it alpha put it in brackets here better um, between x equals 0 0.8 and x equals 0 0.9 and that's a complete answer here so you don't just say there's a change in sign you show there's a change in sign so you give the calculation that shows the change in sign and you don't just leave it like that you also write in words that as there's a change in sign between those two values when you those two values put into the function like i've stated here then there must be a root between those two values of x okay and if you mention that's a continuous function that's even better a continuous function basically means that it doesn't break there's no like an asymptote here okay if there's sometimes there's an asymptote there might be a change in sign like for example if there's an asymptote over here between in a curve like this there's going to be a change in sign between here and here, but there's no root. So you're mentioning that there's no uh, change, there's no asymptote. It's basically continuous. It doesn't just uh, you know stop here. Um, so there must be a root between these two values. Okay, so that's part A completed. Now we're going to go to part B. Okay, part B. It says the iterative the iteration formula x equals n plus one equals one third um, arc cosine one point five xn minus 2 can be used to find an approximate value for alpha using this iteration formula with x1 equals 0 0.8 find to four decimal places the value of x2 and x5 okay now that's a little trick there you could have seen, not seen that as x5 if you do look carefully enough normally you'd think x2 and x3 okay normally they say find x2 x3 x4 x5 here they're saying find x2 and they want you to find x5 so that's a little uh, trick that they've got there now Basically, the iteration formula just homes in on the solution. You find a value close to the solution, which we've cho chosen at 0 0.8. And then when you substitute that into here, it will get you close to the solution. So basically, when you put x1 into here, all right, it will give you the next value x2. And then you put the next value that you found when you put x1 into here back into here again. So the x2 value goes in here again. And the x3 value goes here and here again and so on until you get closer and closer to the actual root. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to say that x2, I'm just going to state this fact, x2, so I, I'm showing I understand what's going on. x2 equals a third arc cosine. Now, arc cosine means inverse cosine, that's all. It just means inverse cosine. So arc cosine, 1.5 times x1, I'm going to write it like this first, minus 2. So just to show that I understand, I've got to put x1 in here to find what x2 is. So I can say x2 equals, so I'm going to write the steps for the first one, arc cosine, another c there, and I've got 1.5 times x1, which is 0 0.8. Okay, they told us that x1 equals 0 0.8 minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to find x2 this way, but I'm going to do something because I'm going to, I need to find what x3 is and x4 is and I know I need to find finally what x5 is okay so this is part one and this is going to be for part two okay so I need to find what x3 and 4 and 5 are so I'm going to use the same kind of thing again and I have to keep putting the new answer so when I found x2 I'm going to put the value that I find for x2 back into here again and when I find x3, I've got to put that value back into here again. And x4, I've got to do the same thing again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a way to do this with your calculator so you don't have to go through much hassle. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically, first of all, my value of x1 is 0 0.8. So I'm going to put 0 0.8. So the, the first value put in, 0 0.8, I'm going to press equals. So that is now my answer in the calculator. That's If I press the answer button, it will bring me this value here. That's the last answer in my calculator. I can press cancel. Okay, and just to make sure if you press answer, it gives you that, right? So that's our answer inside the inside the calculator. Now, I'm going to set up this, um, you know, in my calculator. So I'll have 1 over 3. So I'll have my fraction, 1 over 3. I'm going to have arc cosine, which means inverse cosine of, and I have 1.5. And I'm going to not put 0 0.8. I'm going to put answer. So it's 1.5 times my answer. Okay, and minus 2. Close the bracket, and that should give me x2. Okay, so that's x2. All right, so I'm going to write down what x2 is because they asked me to write it down, and I'm going to write it down to four decimal places. So this is going to be 0 0.8368327. 0 0.8327 to four decimal places. 0 0.8327. 0 0.8327. Okay, just to make sure again, 8327, that's right. So that's four decimal places for x2. Now for x3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, if I press equals again, it's going to take this. Now this is my last answer. It's going to replace the answer space with this. So it's going to put this into the place of that. Okay, so I can all I need to do, once I've shown that first step, I can just press equals again. Okay, and I don't have to write all of this out again. Press equals again, that gives me x3. So I'm going to write, actually write down x3, just for completeness sake, 0 0.8068. 0 0.8068, that's x3. I press equals again, it's going to give me x4. It's going to put x3 into here, and that will come out with x4. So that's 0 0.8271. 0 0.8271. But they want us to find x5. Okay, the final answer. So I have to press it one more time. That's now x5, 0 0.8110, 0 0.8110, so I've put it in once, that's, that's, that's x2, so that's the answer for part 1, x2 equals 0 0.8327, that's the answer for part A, A part or B part 1, part 2, um, I've, I've put it in one more time, that's x3, put it one more time, that's x4. I put in another time, that's x5. So this is my x5, and I've got my answer here, complete. Okay, that's the answer for part B, and now we're going to move on to part 